Hi, my name is Jordan Hallow, and this semester I took a class on game development. It was my idea to build an arcade cabinet to play our games on that we make in class. From there, we decided it would be great if we could play not just our own games, but the games created by classmates of previous years and our current classmates. The core of our cabinet is a Raspberry Pi, which is a $35 microcomputer that can fit in the palm of your hand. It uses standard input and output devices to allow it to work with conventional monitors and keyboard and mice. As the Pi boots up, it launches into a menu application we wrote. This menu displays information about each of the games on our cabinet and allows you to launch them from a centralized location. We designed the menu to allow the modular addition of other games as we continue on with the cabinet project so future games can also be included without any hassle. So we wanted to emulate the look and feel of a traditional arcade cabinet, but we weren't sure if we wanted to have the full stand-up system to begin with. So we decided to go ahead and prototype, which is a port more portable tabletop system that we can carry around and transport a lot more easily and just plug in wherever. The idea behind the portable cabinet is that we can just take it anywhere to be able to show off our games to other people in our class. When it came to the actual cabinet design, uh, it went through multiple iterations. The first iteration was more boxy than the current iteration of the cabinet itself. Uh, I chose to do more sloping action with the design uh, due to it made it look a little bit more slick. Uh, when it came to the material we wanted it to be as, as cost effective as possible. We had already put about $150 down towards the project. For the wood itself we used three quarter plywood which probably wasn't the best idea but it was what was available to us. But when it came to cutting the wood itself, it became kind of a struggle to get it to look official. So we put paneling around the outside so we could paint it and make it look a little less rough. When it came to the painting part, we used spray paint. We could have used a, a flat base paint, but the spray paint was a little bit cheaper, so it kept us under budget. When it came to sound design, uh, we wanted to mount speakers into the cabinet. The mounting process went through a few iterations as well. After that we decided to use two square blocks to hold it vertically in place while also putting a screw through the top of it to keep it horizontally in place. So when it came to having the panels on there, there was a, a slight issue of it being a little askew, so we decided to put down a rubber coating around the edges. Um, this both for safety and for aesthetics. The rubber coating we used, we actually just cut a, a rubber hose in half and strung it along the outside with some hot glue. Energy consumption wise, we had multiple electrical devices running throughout the cabinet. In order to supply power to all those devices, we needed to use a surge protector. This gives us enough power output to run enough electricity to the lights and the buttons and also the Raspberry Pi itself. Well, we chose to have six buttons for each player just because most games that are designed for a stand-up arcade system generally aren't as involved as a standard controller that has, what, four, eight, about 12 buttons plus a couple control sticks. We figured, I mean, this would work even for just about anything that we made and even be excessive for some of our games, and mine only uses three. When it comes to the buttons themselves, the lights that are inside of them were lined up in series. To handle user input, we used the IPAC2 board. It takes the signal from a button press and converts it into a keyboard output. Most custom-made arcade cabinets use the same board. We started off by using an 8-inch monitor. This very quickly became uh, a nuisance when it came to trying to play a two-player game on a small screen, so we decided to move up to a 22-inch monitor. When it came to trying to mount that monitor instead of the 8-inch, we had to think of ways to actually upright mount it to the cabinet itself. I had the idea of using two bracket mounts on the back to give it stability. One of the things that I think would be cool to add to the cabinet would be the ability for games to interact with the physical lights on our machine. This would allow games to control the lighting on the arcade machine as they go through in response to gameplay events. Another feature that I think would benefit the cabinet would be taking advantage of the Raspberry Pi's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. Currently, right now, everything we have is locally available only, but if we had the ability to interact with the internet and Bluetooth devices, it could open up another range of uh, gameplay opportunities for the cabinet. 
If we had more time, hardware-wise, what I would like to add to the cabinet is possible buttons on the right and left side for back and forward. Uh, we have those mounted on top right now, but if you get, got it out of the way of the user itself, it might lend a little bit better experience. Also, I'd like to figure out a better mounting system for the monitor or possibly mounting the monitor inside of a, another piece of wood that we could then put behind the cabinet. This gives both security and it won't let people mess around with the cords that we have. I think it would be really cool to build a full-size cabinet and put it in the mountain lair or somewhere else on campus. And I think it would be cool to add a coin slot. Two-player mode for most of the games. Multiplayer should definitely be implemented. I mean, we built the cabinet for to be a two-player system. I just realized that I've been rolling with a Mac sitting next to me. <laughs> I'll, gotcha. I'll deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that in the post. Yeah. <laughs>